And, uh, but in the meantime, you've seen the trailer, and we'll show a clip in a little while uh, that'll give you a taste for uh, what the film holds. Um, but I want to ask how you came to this film and what brought you to it, what, what drew your interest, what was the process of your co initial conversations with the director, Lars von Trier, uh, what was your um, knowledge of and interest in his work prior, and uh, just sort of what, what brought you to Jack? Yeah, um, well, I guess it was, um, I, was in, I was in Italy uh, with my girlfriend when I got the, we were driving, I don't remember exactly when I got it, but I remember when I was reading it because I was driving. She was driving. I wasn't reading and driving simultaneously. And um, it was definitely the most <clears throat> kind of unusual script. I'd, ne I'd, I'd never read a script that was quite like it. And I'm talking about just in the style and the way in which it was written. Um, it was very evocative, the way a novel is, but it wasn't a novel, but it Often scripts tend to be a little technical, and they they're not as enjoyable reading as. But this was really, it was really a world in and of itself that I was drawn to, and uh, and we were driving along, and I was reading through the script, and I started to laugh, and she said, "What are you laughing at?" And I said, "Well, this guy just ran this woman over <laughs> with his van," and <laughs> and I said, "Well, yeah, I guess you'd have to have read the script." <laughs> To know why that was funny, um, and uh, so then I—that's was my experience, and I thought, well, this is a great character because it really is. It's not your typical uh, kind of—I don't know if there is such thing as a typical serial murderer movie, but or, but it's not a typical crime movie, uh, which usually there's. Uh, an investigator of some kind, a kind of moral counterbalance. This kind of puts you in 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 the seat with uh, with Jack, with the with the serial killer in this case, and and uh, at times you're even kind of complicit in in a way with him. Um, and so I met with Lars. <clears throat> I was in Europe, so I went and met him in, in Denmark, and we talked, and we had a we had a pretty good chemistry right away and uh, um, you know he told me a little bit of the history of the project in fact he had he had the film written on the wall like he had it, it he had it sort of charted around the wall you know the different uh, sequences I'd actually I think I have pictures of that somewhere I'm gonna take him pictures of that and uh, he said one thing to me that I remember he said, I take responsibility for my films. And I was like, okay, that's going to be important for this movie, I think. Um, and presumably uh, that's uh, a, a real statement coming from him. Yeah. Because he gets called to account a lot for his film. Oh, yeah. But he stopped caring a long time ago, I think. <laughs> um, yeah. And I guess uh, we should preface our conversation with just to lay a little bit of the groundwork of, of the, what how the film tells Jack's story and that the sort of chapter sequence um, the way that the narrative is structured yeah. there's there's a, a framing narrative where you hear in voiceover Jack telling a story to somebody that you gradually and that, that somebody is responding. Yes. And that somebody yes. is Bruno Gans, right? Yes, they're yeah. having a conversation. Verge, his name is. And uh, it becomes clear that they are uh, on a journey somewhere. And while they're on this journey, in voiceover, you hear Jack narrating this sequence of incidents. They're called, they're numbered incidents. Uh, each one centers on a murder that Jack has committed, sort of broadly speaking. Uh, and it spans I, how many years? I mean, I'm I'm asking you. I should know these things. Uh, it spans, I think, twelve or sixteen years. Yeah, or something. it's a chunk of his life. Twelve. Yeah. And twelve. Who said that? <laughs> All right. Okay. Twelve years. Twelve years span. Yeah. And so we're really being told the story by the man himself, and it's, I think, one of the things that makes it a very unusual 
portrait of a serial killer is that we're being he he is presenting these events to us just sort of as a way to pass the time it's suggested on his way somewhere and as a result the way that these incidents are told in sort of a flashback format is very much rationalized by him and by his, he, he narrates his experience and his feelings and his motivations. And I wonder uh, what kind of preparation did you do for this role of, of getting into the head of a very obviously psychopathic person who is a very colorful personality in certain respects. He's, he's uh, very narcissistic, very um, obsessive compulsive and you know, identifies himself as such. And I just wonder w how you got inside his head and how the, the narration uh, tied into that. Um, well, it's interesting because I think we're, we're for me, I have to go back to the character of Jack and myself as an actor and the way I approach things. And, you know, typically I have this very strong sense of responsibility and, you know, uh, I like to prepare as much in this film. We did have time. You know, often now people, uh, you know, are making films and they have to come together so quickly and they're like, oh, I'm great. When do they want me to start? Like next week. And I'm used to having more time for that. And this film, we did have that time. And that was kind of scary because that gave me time to think about backing out, you know? <laughs> Can I get out of this thing now, you know? And it was not because of Lars, because I, am, I really admire his, his, uh, him as a filmmaker, but just going to that dark place and playing and, and going to this world and going into that character um, was, I had my, my uh, reservations and uh, but I did commit to it because of Lars because I liked him I liked him personally too I have to say I found him to be that we had, I had a good chemistry with him I liked him and um, and uh, we I, I think the thing that in talking about preparing for the this movie um, and this character really was uh, something, I think at the core, it was all about freedom. And I think that's why Lars is a, a great filmmaker, is the environment on the set was all about freedom. Freedom to fail, you know, to try things and, and, and uh, maybe not succeed. And, but that we can do it again. And so, you know, um, we never rehearsed, and I don't mean like, I mean, we really, truly never rehearsed. And that was, you know, one of the things that uh, that we talked about, and I agreed to that. And I agreed to it because I knew it was coming from the right place. I mean, often when an, a director or an assistant director says, um, let's shoot the rehearsal, it's usually not a good sign. It usually means that they're in a hurry, they're falling behind, they want to, you know, they might make, they might spin it to make it sound like, oh, we, we want to see what what's going to happen. But in the case with Lars, when we would be on the phone before, you know, months out before we started shooting, and we would start, we, we'd get into a place where there was some sort of uh, miscommunication or misunderstanding about what was going on, and we were having a debate about something, he'd say, you know, when we're on the set filming, that's when we have to stop everything and, and do just what we're doing right now, which is to have, like, the hell with it. Let's just, that's the most important time to do it. And it's so paradox, it's so um, counterintuitive to what most people say, oh, I'm really glad we got this conversation out of the way now so we don't have to deal with it when we get on the set. With him, it's the opposite, you know? And so the fact that we didn't, rehearse and sometimes we were doing like six pages of dialogue long sequences long scenes was a little bit uh you know something i wasn't that i'm not really used to and i'm not used to cooperating with that kind of thinking i'm like hey let's this is for us this is for us actors and i think i think the camera department feels the same way however 
that's precisely why we do this, right? Let's see what happens. You know, let's really see what happens. And uh, that was great because it, for me, all my schemes and ideas and, and plans and ideas about how I'm going to, you know, create this, they go right out the window and I'm forced to stay in the moment just to, to be there. And it's, it's really great. And the one time I said to him, I said, Lars, I think it was a scene that I had with this great actress, Riley Keough, who's in the film. And I said, I think we should rehearse this because it was a very physical scene. And he goes, okay, can we do one like that after we do one without a rehearsal? <laughs> so I said, okay, all right, let's go. Come on, let's do this. You mentioned you have had some, some reservations about... Um, sort of the, what it would require to get so up close and personal with such an evil character and, and that there's something, um, something difficult about that. And I will say that as a viewer of the film, it's, a, it's an unsettling experience to watch the film because you are so up close and personal with such a terrible person and- No, really <laughs> Jack. And it's and it's it's really um, there's there's a way that Jack gets under your skin, and I wonder uh, what it turned what the reality of playing him felt like, and in your relations with the other actors, and the ways in which you know if you're if you're acting out these scenes without a rehearsal, it's very immediate. It's very um, about sort of being in the moment of these dynamics between the characters and I wonder was it what you anticipated was it like any other um, work you've done in past in your career was it something else well yes and no I mean what I liked that there were things there was and I felt one of the reasons I took the job I didn't do this film because I want to do a movie about a serial murder or something I did it because I wanted to work with somebody who I thought was really creative and a group, he's, he's got a great crew. And I knew that it would be an experience that I would walk away from it and I'd say, okay, I, I learned something. Cause I've been doing it for a while and you know, you you learn a little bit and then you start to think you know things. And, and I found the opposite to be the true, that there were a lot of things that I thought were rules and those rules are not necessarily rules at all. They're just, you know, the rules are meant to be broken, you know? And uh, so I don't know, what was your question? I'm sorry, I just, I just kind of went, got how, how did it feel? How did it? Go? Yeah, how did it feel? Well, there were d days that were very difficult. And I don't know how many people have seen the film or not, but there's some, okay, we have some people here. Who, oh, that's good, you came to this talk afterwards. I guess you want an explanation for this. Um... um yeah, there were certain sequences that were really difficult for me. And there was, there was only one episode, right, that was, it a, involves a picnic. And uh, I, it was difficult for me. It was difficult for me, and I think it would be difficult for probably anybody, in a way. It's difficult as an audience person, uh, member. And um, so there were days, I mean, I'm not... Uh, deluded. I know who I am. I know I'm Matt. I'm not Jack. I have empathy. Jack has zero empathy. You know, I know that. I'm not lacking that. So, and that the challenge for me at times was to play a character who has absolutely no empathy. You know, that was very challenging for me at times. And, um, and, you know, I think there's a little part of that that there's the personal ego involved. Like, it's a risky thing to do to play somebody like that. I'm aware of that. And, of course, you know, there's that old thing that nobody likes the sound of their own voice, you know. And I think it's that subjectivity that you feel. And when you're an actor, you can't avoid that sometimes. And, you know, it's... But the idea that seeing... I was afraid that maybe I would reject seeing myself play this character. And, um, and so when I went back to, to, uh, 
Denmark with Laura uh, with uh, Bruno when we had to do because as you said there was this it's a voiceover but it's kind of a conversation between Bruno Gans and I we had to re-record we had to record that and post and Lars grabbed a hold of me and said we have to watch the film together and I was like <laughs> yes <laughs> and I was figuring out how am I going to get it because I, part of me did not want to see it because I was so afraid that I would reject seeing myself play the character and fortunately I was able to get out of it for a few days but we were there for more than a few days so I ended up I sat with him in the morning and we watched it and you know I like Lars very much and uh, it was just the two of us sitting there and I made a mistake because after the the, the movie ended and I was watching the credits. I turned to him and I said, wow, I really like it. And he looked at me and he said, what? <laughs> and I said, oh no, I shouldn't have told him that. Now he's going to change the whole movie. <laughs> and, uh, but, um, you know, I didn't reject seeing myself play the character and uh, that I felt actually, you know, the way you feel sometimes when you take a chance and it, it worked. And that's how I felt in my heart, you know. That, I, that a lot of the things I was worried wouldn't work worked and and like that and um, and I liked the other actors that I worked with a lot it was a great experience I have to say it's a and you know for me and I don't mean to just I know you guys some of, a lot of you haven't seen the film yet and there is there are things about it that are disturbing and upsetting but I mean I think the, the film is more than it's about more than what's there on the surface and the um and the the cruelty and the evilness that exists that exists on this planet um i was very disturbed to learn that when i decided to do this part i didn't have an obsession with serial killers it was not even that interesting to me as a subject and i went online and i couldn't believe how much there is about this subject online how many books are out there and how many how much this is like a real part of the human condition and we don't know anything about it so it was i think i'm just kind of rambling here no i, I, mean, I have all kinds of questions about it okay. i um the fact that you didn't come to the project with an interest in serial killer stories um is i think it it, it it's interesting because in some ways the film is about, as you mentioned, it's, it's very pointedly about more than what's on the surface and more than, and, and Jack is really a, a, an allegorical figure and you could you know, read a lot into what the film is saying. Um, and I'll, I'll get to that a little later, I think. But um, as far as the, the voiceover conversation between Jack and Virgil, which you said you, uh, you saw the film before? Well, we did the voiceover mm -hmm. in production, and then later on, after the film was cut together, we did it again uh -huh. in post-production. And that did, I think that the, the sort of philosophical ruminating that the two of them go back and forth with in their conversation um, sort of is a guide in many ways of how how to sort of read the the what's on screen the scenes the, the episodes as they play out and was that um was that something that was on your mind a lot as you were um acting out the scenes and and sort of embodying jack were you thinking in terms of the the bigger meanings and the philosophical uh subtext or or um adjacent text well there, there's a lot of stuff in there that really is Lars's own musings about it that are in that, in that way I, I don't even know that I'm playing Lars although he did say it was the character closest to himself except that he doesn't kill people he said that and you know but some of that stuff was like it is Jack and that Jack is this compulsive obsessive guy and and uh but he has this sensibility. He's a, a failed artist. He's an artist, but he's a failed artist. And you know, he's an architect. He's a he's a frustrated architect. And and so a lot of that stuff is his kind of musings about art. And so that is where it's not just a typical 
you know, thing that you're seeing on one of these television shows about serial killers and stuff like that. It really gets into more looking at it from the viewpoint of... I mean, I think of Jack as a failed artist, and that story is about that in a way. And uh, and and I think the reason that he is a failed artist is because he has abs- he's missing this very key component in human beings, which is empathy, right? <coughs> How I see it, you know. It's a very good film I, I, that I liked called uh, Odd Man Out by Carol Reed. And there's a great performance in it by that actor. And he's an artist who... Oh, you know what? You'll have to see the movie. I'm not going to try and do this. I'm not... That's... A, yeah, right? Great film, yeah. Go see Odd Man Out. Odd Man Out, one of my favorites. Well, we've, uh, we've, at this point, we've talked a good deal about what's in the house that Jack built, and so I want to take a moment. We have a clip to show. Um, it's about five minutes long, so we'll run the clip, and then um, that'll, I think, give those of you in the audience who have not seen the film yet maybe a little more sense of what we're talking about and give sort of some more context for our conversation. So we can roll the clip. I love that scene. I think it, there's a lot going on there. Um, and I, I should have prefaced it, I realized, um, with a little bit of context, just to say that uh, I don't think it's giving too much away to say that Jack has just killed the woman who lived in that house and um, it, for various reasons is still sort of on the scene of the crime and uh, is... He, he can't leave because he has OCD and he keeps thinking maybe he... So he's been back and forth into the house several times to clean up the crime scene, but there's never anything there every time he goes back. And so even when the police come, he still can't get himself to leave. And I, I, I think it's a really brilliant scene as an encapsulation of Jack and the, the way that he is having fun with the cop, but also um, is, seems to be very serious about it. And he's, he's, he's lying, he seems to be making, you know, he's sort of weaving a story mm. and um, really committing to it in a way that is, um, it, it, it's a risk. He's taking a great risk by sort of playing with the situation in this way and, and um, testing the police officer in a sort of a show of his own power that he... Uh, well, I think at a certain point he realizes that... I mean, the interesting thing is the first thing he does is he puts his hands against the van because he's... And it's out of context because you haven't seen... The whole, there's a whole long sequence that happens before several before that and uh, he puts himself against the, the van because he thinks he's going to be arrested and then I mean, he realizes that the guy is just asking to look inside the van and maybe he thinks he realizes that maybe he can manipulate this guy that this guy doesn't know what he's doing and, and so um, then he starts to toy with him a little bit and because he's been so thorough about his own, in the earlier sequences, he has gone back and forth into the house because it's that thing where he thinks maybe I, there might be a few specks of blood still somewhere, and there are none, and he keeps going back and cleaning up areas that where there's nothing there, and um, and so. But and he can't get himself to leave, you know. He can't he can't get himself to leave. And I think it's very. When I was doing that scene, Laura said to me, "You don't know how close this is to my life. Not, <laughs> not, not the killing, but the, the the cleaning up of one spot. You know, maybe that's dirt, you know, or whatever it is. In this case, it's Jack. It's blood, you know. Obsessive compulsive." Did you see the similarities? Hmm? The, the oh, yeah, he said that. He said, oh, you don't know how close this is to my life, you know. <coughs> well, unfortunately, we have limited time, so I, I want to um, just very quickly zoom out a little bit and uh, ask, I understand you're working on a documentary right now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just sort of doing a 180. Um, 
going from making this film and uh, now showing this film on the one hand and then uh, on the other hand you have your other work and, and can you mm. just talk a little bit about what you're working on and how, how it all... Yeah, happens? well that's a project that's really, I guess they call it a labor of love. I think sometimes it's a labor of masochism. You know, I mean, to do, I love it, I like it, but documentaries are really hard, and uh, you know, they really are. I've learned that, it's very humbling, but uh, um, yeah, I mean, it's something, we're very close, I think, to finishing it, but um, that's something I'm working on. And I've gone back and forth to it for years now, you know, it's something that, but we're getting very close to finishing it right now. And yeah, I mean, listen, I, I think doing, uh, for me, the best thing that you can ask for is to work with uh, talented people, especially, and it's a director's medium, and to work with a, a director, and Lars was a great director, and I had a great experience doing it, and uh, I should never have told him, I, no, that I, I really liked the film, <laughs> Lars. What? He became immediately suspicious that he didn't make the movie right. You know, no, not really. But uh, I, I, we, you know what? I just say that as dark as the film is, it wasn't that way on the set. You know, and I hope that that transmits because I think that's important. You know, you know. I love the film, and I'm excited for people to see it so that we can have more conversations about it and. Yeah, I mean, Lars does say that the film needs to be digested over a period of time, which is totally understandable. So, like, uh, doing the, the Q&A after the movie is always tough because, like, people are like, well, what can you say about the movie that wasn't just said about uh, in the movie, you know? And, um, but, yeah. Well, on that note, unfortunately, I think we have to wrap up. Thank um, you, Maddie. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.